right, welcome to today's episode of Tomorrow's Leader, where we dive deep on all things leader-related, related to leading yourself and leading others. I am John Larita, your host. Uh, first of all, shout out to Danell, who is a great friend and a great fan of this show. Uh, thank you for continuing to listen and giving some great support and great encouragement. Um, I also want to announce something which is really cool. I just take I take a look at our stats every so often on this podcast. And one of the stats that's pretty amazing is this podcast is now reaching and has audience and listeners in 61 countries. Isn't that unreal? Wow, 61 countries. I'm super proud of that. In just over a year, uh, we had our best day yesterday, actually, best day ever in terms of downloads. So we are growing like crazy. Please share this with your friends. Um, I, I love your feedback. You tell me all kinds of great stuff about how this is helpful. I want to help more people and get this message out to others. And I'm always interested in new ideas, content, guests that you can uh, enjoy on this show. But um, in particular, things that you might be struggling with, leadership challenges in your organization or just leading yourself, how to do that a little bit more effectively. So as you know, we cover a whole bunch of different topics on this and a lot of them come from you. So uh, today, what I want to talk about is the concept of adaptability. And I get a lot of questions around, okay, how do you know how to lead an organization or when to lead an organization through major change? And I will tell you, this does not even have to do with you leading your organization. This is just even leading your own life. Because I know I've talked to a lot of people and I've been there myself where you knew a decision you wanted to make and you felt like that decision would prompt so much change in your life, and you weren't quite sure if you were ready for that change. You weren't quite sure if you could handle so much uh, disruption or just sheer change. It could be positive change, but you just weren't sure if you could handle all of that at one time, or maybe your family or your, your organ people in your organization, your employees, whatever it is. So I wanna talk about that, and I wanna actually give a few stories, yeah, Crazy, huh? I've got some stories to share a point. Um, as always, I've got a few. So here's the interesting thing. I saw a uh, a a study, and a a guy had done a test to see if he could learn how to ride a bicycle that was actually built uh, totally opposite of how you would normally have a bike built. So when you normally turn a bike handlebars to the left, it turns to the left and right to the right. We've all learned how to ride a bike. And once you do, you can not be on a bike for 10 years and jump on and pick it right back up. But what he wanted to test is, could the brain, could your brain actually learn how to ride this bike if it was wired differently? And would it be quick? Would you be able to pick it up? Would you not? Well, what's interesting is uh, he did this experiment and you looked at it, he vid videoed it, and it seemed like this relatively easy thing. Okay, well, you just kind of reverse it in your brain, right? Instead of turning to the right, you need to turn to the left when you feel yourself you know, going the opposite direction. But this guy could not master it. And his whole point of this was how difficult it was, but ultimately he did. He trained his brain to adapt to a whole different way of riding a bike. And, and you have to make very quick decisions with riding a bike because otherwise you're gonna fall over. It took him eight months to figure out how to ride a bike effectively and efficiently. And he actually went around and did like, you know, work uh, seminars. I remember hearing him or seeing him on a stage and he rode the bike across the stage and it was this big deal. Well, he put out a challenge to another guy. I think the guy's, he's a YouTube guy named Mike Boyd. And, um, and Mike figured out how to do it in like, four days or five days, the same exact thing. Still took four or five days, but not eight months. It took four or five days. So, you know, my point is you figure out your body and your brain figure out how to do things unbelievably quickly. And now eight months doesn't sound quickly, but if it's something you've learned for your whole life, my point is it was at his, there was a period where he's like, you know what? I just don't think I can do this. I don't think I can retrain my brain. But ultimately, you can retrain your brain, you can retrain your body, you can retrain anything, and you adapt to different circumstances. And then this other guy figured out how to do it in four days, and I'm sure since then people have figured out how to do it in four hours and then four minutes. Um, my point is sometimes those things that we think are impossible and like, okay, I'm never going to be able to relearn something, not only can you do it, but oftentimes you can do it even faster 
than you think you can. Uh, another example is I read a study where they took glasses and they inverted the lens. So in other words, when you look through this gla these glasses, uh, you saw the world upside down, literally. You saw everything upside down. Now, I can't even imagine putting these glasses on and trying to walk, uh, let alone not get sick and barf. But um, when you did it, ultimately, over time, your brain was retrained. And what they found in these people in this study is that their eyes, their brain basically flip-flopped the image. So once that image was reflected into their uh, retinas, they ref they, the, it f the, your brain flip-flopped, it interpreted it and flip-flopped the image back. So when they finally were putting on the glasses, they saw not an inverted image, but an actual normal image. Now, the crazy thing is when they took off the glasses, then without any kind of glasses, they saw the world upside down. Their brain had literally changed their whole way of perceiving and understanding and interpreting what it saw through the lens of your, of your eyes. Unbelievable. Another great example of how adaptable we are. Uh, you know, Lisa, my operations director, just told me she came back from St. Croix on a vacation and you drop, you drive on the opposite side of the street. And I asked her, I said, how, was that like really difficult? Like, did you, you know, were you almost in an accident and stuff? And she said, no, surprisingly, you kind of learn how to do it. The turns are tough, but you figure out a lot faster than you would think you learn how to do this. Bottom line is we are much more adaptable and the people in your organization and the people in your life are much more adaptable to change than you ever think. Sometimes we worry too much about this. You know, I'm always amazed, you know, when we went into to COVID here and at the gym, first the gyms were closed and then they were open. And now, you know, we're if you're listening to this at a period down the road, this is now uh, April of 2021. We're still in COVID. At my gym, uh, they've opened the gym, but you have to wear uh, a mask full time, not just a little bit. Now, when this first came out, it was OK. You had to wear your mask while you're walking around. But when you got to your weights or your station or your elliptical or whatever you're doing, you could take your mask off um, because it was inconceivable. Like, how can you work out like fully intense workout with a mask covering your face? So when they came out with this rule, I'm like, you know, my lifting buddy, Jeff and I were like, what, I, how are we going to do this? So like we do these really intense workouts. And in fact, Thursday, we have every morning, we, we uh, every week, we, we just dread because it's this absolutely hellacious spin class. That is the toughest thing I've ever done. I think ever. And we're like, how, how, how are we ever going to do this? But what's amazing is, even despite the fact you're like, <sighs> and you can't catch your breath, you can't get a breath, um, your body actually adapts to it. It's unbelievable. I'm like blown away at the fact that we actually have learned, and now it's kind of, you know, it's still a tough workout, but we've adapted and learned how to do a really intense workout with like no breathing ability. I mean, a mask over your face. Think about this. Before COVID, would you ever, you've seen those those high, you know, uh, ultra elite athletes are trained with a mask. And I remember thinking, wow, they're crazy. I mean, that's nuts. It's just a whole different level. And now this is our norm. You go in the gym and everybody's having to train. So we are in much better shape because of that. Uh, literally, our, our cardio, cardio ca capability is much better than it would have been had we not been in this. And it was like this little side benefit, but we never thought we could do that. If you asked us before COVID, can you imagine doing a, this intense uh, you know, spin class with a mask over your mouth and your nose? No way, there's, there's no, I just wouldn't even do it. It's hard enough when you have full capacity to breathe. There is no way, no conceivable way we could do that. Yet every Thursday morning, we do it, we make it happen. So. My point is, and my question to you as leaders, leaders of your own life, leaders of your family, leaders of your company, leaders of your sports team, whatever it is, what decisions are you holding off on because you are concerned about yours or your, the people in your organization's ability to adapt to change? And my point is, I have delayed as a leader and just even a human in my own life leader in my own life, I have delayed or not made decisions because I was overly concerned about other people's adaptability, sometimes my own, but other people's adaptability. And my learning from that is don't be. People are very uh, able 
much more so than they even realize to adapt to change. So if you're a leader feeling like your organization needs to go in a new direction, don't delay if that's truly, and you're the leader, and you truly believe that, and you need to make a key strategic change, don't delay because you feel like people won't be able to make that change with you. The, the opportunity there is to learn how to lead through change, which I've done some other podcasts on. I'm more than happy to talk to you about that. But don't delay that decision because of others' inability to adapt to that change. Don't underestimate people's ability and yours to adapt to the change. If you're in a relationship and you're trying to get out of the relationship, don't delay because you're feeling like your inability to adapt to these circumstances or your new life or whatever the case may be if that's truly not the right relationship. If you're in a, in a co company and you have personnel changes to make and you know somebody doesn't belong in your organization, don't delay because you feel like that's gonna leave this big gap or hole in your organization and uh, how are other people gonna adapt to the workload and everything like that. If you feel like the culture is starting to slide in the wrong direction, don't delay making the change and turning it back because you're concerned how other people will respond. It's the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes I see leaders make and I think people in general with their life. So I hope I gave you some things to think about with this and maybe just kind of a little self-check there uh, as a leader uh, yourself and or maybe you know somebody who's kind of caught in that situation or you've heard them talk about this type of thing. Uh, realize your ability to adapt to new circumstances is unbelievable. It truly, truly is. So uh, with that, quick one today. Hopefully that was beneficial. Please make sure you give five stars, review, share, like, uh, comment, all that kind of good stuff. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks, everybody.